You've arrived at Pretty Spiritual Podcast, where we share our spiritual journeys to empower yours. Come on in. Yeah, okay. No, seriously, come in. (laughs) Hey, everyone. Hey. Hi, we're so glad to be back together. This is, spoiler alert, this is... The second year that we've been doing this, it always happens around my birthday. I'm feeling very nostalgic, and I'm just so happy that we can be together for this season two of Pretty Spiritual Podcast. And today, we are going to talk about self-forgiveness. And we're really, I think what we're trying to do here is talk about self-forgiveness because I believe that it is part of the pathway that is required for Mm self-love. Okay, I know these are really big topics. We already did the Mm self-love. We already did the forgiveness. They're great episodes. Mm -hmm. Go have a listen if you haven't. Mm -hmm. But I think in our evolution, Mm -hmm. our spiritual evolution that we've been trying to eke out here, uh, I have found that... Um, the forgiveness of self, even contemplating forgiving oneself brings up so much for me. Mm. And I think that this isn't something that is talked about a lot. So I'm excited to get into it today. You know, we talk about forgiving others and I'm excited to touch into how looking at the areas that forgiveness could soften our insides and bring us closer to loving ourselves is my thoughts, is my hope. Back when we touched into the depths of what the starting of a self-love journey is, I had no idea the abyss that was upward and outward for me to explore. That is what I realize now. All those Google searches of <laughs> how to love yourself came up short. Because learning to love myself the way I need to be loved is a very intimate, personalized journey. One must make the concerted effort to get to know, understand, observe, pay attention to, accept, forgive, build up, and practice the art of truly knowing how to love oneself. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Of course, to attempt to remember to do that in real time. Mm -hmm. So today, we are going to talk about self-forgiveness as a pathway to cultivating more self-love in hopes of. (laughs) I love it. And I believe that these topics make sense to keep touching on in our episode themes because We've changed so much in one year. Mm -hmm. I changed so much in one week. Mm -hmm. Exactly. (laughs) And it's this cornerstone foundational stuff. So it's not like I do it once and then it's solved. It's just this revisit, re-understand, new Mm -hmm. perspective. Sometimes, Lindsay, you'll use that metaphor of the spiral staircase, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like we're seeing the same things as we go around, but we're kind of keep ascending and seen it from a different perspective Mm -hmm. and I do mean ascending into nirvana because we are reaching spiritual enlightenment (laughs) (laughs) don't worry jk (laughs) don't worry that's not us we sure are trying some stuff though although we have been wearing some sequin robes okay that that part is true (laughs) I wanted to bring up a a quote first I love that so here we go So this is by Don Miguel Ruiz. Forgive yourself. The supreme act of forgiveness is when you can forgive yourself for all the wounds you've created in your own life. Forgiveness is an act of self-love. When you forgive yourself, self-acceptance begins and self-love grows. Well, you wrapped it up. The end. (laughs) Uh, Don Don did. (laughs) Thanks, Don. (laughs) Thanks, Don Miguel. Yes. I love that quote. And I have been working on self-love. What a great topic you picked because I didn't even realize it wasn't there until Mm -hmm. I started hearing and learning and seeing what it could be like. 
So what I'm starting to unearth is that there are parts of myself that I have been holding as unforgivable subtly for a really long time. And so there's a couple themes, like one that's really up for me as I try to write this book and become something I have never been, which is a published author. I see myself as not living up to the opportunities that have been provided to me. So that's one example of what I find unforgivable. There's lots of little themes. So that'll come up and then I have shame. And um, it's also come to light that I judge others around this. And I, when I'm feeling that anger and judgment towards other people, it's really about this deep discomfort in me and an inability to love myself in those same patterns I see in myself. And this isn't a new concept. I've heard it a lot, but for some reason, it's just really making sense to me right now. So I'm just in the thick of even recognizing this disdain for myself Mm -hmm. and then beginning to tap into the tools to shift it. So I specifically have this really big anger at myself for what I see as my self-indulgence, my entitlement, and my emotional demands, especially the emotional demands from past relationships and then that self-indulgence and entitlement of how I've carried myself in the world. Uh, Not as much now, but I can still fall into it. And there's part of my brain that tells me if I don't continue to hate and berate these parts of myself, I will repeat these patterns. So it's like I think it's like a self-protection, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like loving myself and keeping myself safe from being this person that I've decided is bad. So Mm -hmm. somewhere under there is this weird formula that that will get me to love myself. (laughs) (laughs) I know that math. It's a really (laughs) exciting math. It's deeply complex. (laughs) And I'm just now beginning to get what I've always heard people use this term, like hole in the soul or God-sized hole, and they were trying to fill it with food or booze or sex or shopping and whatever. Like I understand that concept, but I never really could feel the immensity of like a God-sized hole is pretty big, you know, like whatever that word means to you. It's just like this unfillable, right? Mm -hmm. And so just yesterday I had this realization that for me, so my deep dark hole is I don't see myself as good enough or deserving enough of the life I have. So I have this this really beautiful life and underneath of that is this like sense that I, I just don't deserve it. And that if I was just more, you name it, successful as a writer uh, what that's the one that I keep harping on is my professional career, but it can pop up in all kinds of different forms. That means no matter how much I do, like community service, publish this book I'm suddenly terrified about again, have a fancy job with a high income, I don't see myself as deserving of my own life. And like, what a rotten way to feel because this is actually my life. Does hating myself subtly change it or make me deserving of it? So This God-sized hole is making sense Um, because whatever I put in there, success, career, love from others, approval, positive feedback from the internet, (laughs) whatever I put in there, I'm still unworthy. So I can't use my Annie thinking to heal that lack of self-love. So where I'm at now is like, okay, what if I can turn to a new understanding a God of my understanding, a perspective shift, an unsuspected inner resource to be filled and love and accept myself as I am. So I have a couple tools I've been experimenting with. This is all very new for me. Annie, thank you so much. I related with that and the topic is so deep and big and dense and personal. So thank you for really getting in there and putting into words a lot of the things that I'm feeling. So thank you for the language. Just like you were saying, I've got to forgive myself for trying to hate myself into being a better person. Mm -hmm. And then I also have to remember that I hate myself and I'm trying to make myself into being a better person. Mm -hmm. That I can't remember the word that you, rotten. You're like, and that's yeah. rotten. Yeah, you know? rotten. And that really explains the feeling tone 
that I am steeped in and living from, and it's quiet, it's ubiquitous, it's nuanced, uh, and then it just spins all these ways, whether mm -hmm. it be my career, that I didn't finish school, that I don't have parents, that it doesn't, the thing is, is that I can tell that this is going to continue on mm -hmm. if I don't look at this and start to heal it and mend it. Mm -hmm. So what's that going to take? I think a lot of it is my awareness. So if I'm getting awareness that there is um, a deep unrest within myself that is encouraging me at every moment and underwriting every single thing that I do as not good enough, you should have been better. How have you not gotten all of this mm -hmm. done already? Mm -hmm. So we can shorthand that to perfectionism. But perfectionism, I used to be proud of that. I used to think, oh, I try so hard. Like I'm I, going places. Yeah, I remember when someone said that that didn't know me, I thought, oh, good. They even know that like I'm doing this thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to look at perfectionism differently with all of the subcategories underneath it in all the ways that in every moment however I chopped that zucchini or mm. what depending on what time I'm leaving to leave somewhere there is these whispers of unworthiness that are telling me this isn't right you have you you're not right and it's really painful and I don't want to. So that's what will lead me into distractions, whatever it may be. Um, Survivor has 40 seasons and I'm concerned for oh, yeah. my well-being at yeah. this point <laughs> because doing this deep inner work is uncomfortable and I really, it's really hard for me to mm -hmm. do this. But I know that if I don't start looking at this and get familiar and l start forgiving myself, like all the friends that I think really deserve forgiveness, if I don't look towards myself like that, mm -hmm. it's not going – I. what will happen is I'm going to be 40, 50, 60, and whether it be fill in the blank, I'm still going to be saying – I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I haven't done enough. Mm -hmm. If I continue to hate myself, I'm going to be better. Mm -hmm. um, or once I do this thing, then. And that's the thing. I am constantly doing that. Well, guess what? Immediately, the not, next thing not rushes in. <laughs> I've never stopped to rest. Mm -hmm. It's never been enough. Mm -hmm. And I am tired, tender, and sad. Mm-hmm. And I don't even recognize it that I am here calling out, begging for myself to say, it's okay. You're doing enough. You are enough. Oh, yeah. That's, I'm going to stop right there because we desperately need some tools. <laughs> and by we, I mean, I desperately need some tools. Yes. <laughs> this I want to share a memory that's come up recently. Just I started this career as a writer about six or seven years ago. And when I moved to Oakland, I got a job writing a column. One of my jobs as a freelance writer was for two local publications, print publications, Oakland Magazine and East Bay Times. And I, or the East Bay Monthly, and I, I didn't share it with anyone. It's this really cool accomplishment. Like, oh, yeah. I get to have this like, column in a magazine with pretty picture like yeah photos it's, they're legit and I'm like it's not good enough once yeah. I publish in this yes. then I'll start sharing things the bigger better one just one step up it's so interesting and now I look back and I have these stacks of these magazines I was just cleaning out my room and I'm like oh Annie how sad that you didn't sh like maybe three articles that I shared with people. And when I did it, like took every ounce of courage and I'm like, Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm doing this. And like, this is the thing that we're talking about, right? Like not good enough, not good enough. Later it will be later. It'll yeah. be okay. Yeah. When I do better, it'll be all yeah. right. I'll love myself when I'm better. Yeah. And then I'll let people see me when I've reached this. 
Yeah, and we're missing out on that whole heart space of lovingness for self. Yeah. And it's it, really sad. It's sad. Because I need love now. <laughs> yeah, you do. You <laughs> I do. need it right now. <laughs> I love you, Lindsay Pony. <laughs> uh, thank you. You're so wonderful. I love you, Lindsay Pony. I know, but I got to love me to receive. Yeah. Oh, yep. So let's get into tools. I would love to hear... Annie, yes. what tools would you like to talk about? So I have two meditation-based tools, and they are ones that I'm working with actively. So it's work in progress. The first one is a forgiveness meditation that was taught to me by a very lovely and wise person. And it is a forgiveness mantra that I've shared before, but now I'm centering it back towards myself. Can I forgive myself for the ways that I behave that I think aren't okay? Can I forgive myself for being so hard on myself? Can mm-hmm. What can I forgive myself for? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to repeat each line of the mantra twice. Like I'll read it through it and then share really briefly on it and then read through it again. So... I'll just say one, two, three, four. So one, I forgive myself for any harm I have done myself. And you can tag on via this behavior, right? By my sense of entitlement, by um, my self-indulgence, by my whatever. Two, I forgive myself for being so angry slash upset slash scared about this for so long. Three, I forgive myself for any harm I've done to others as a result of this behavior. And four, I give myself permission to forgive me. So what I have, what I'll do is I have this really nice kind of music, meditation music that I'll play on Insight Timer, and I'll just repeat those lines in my head as a meditation. Just kind of this like mental balm that I'm just kind of like washing my brain in these ideas. And another way that I practice this is just writing these sentences over and over. And for me, that's a way that I express myself is through writing, handwriting, So maybe it would be painting or maybe you sing or maybe you walk and talk to yourself, like whatever it is. Maybe you record your voice on your little voice recorder on your phone and play it on a loop to yourself. But um, just this kind of like repetition of these phrases through my brain and my body somatically. So I'll just read them again. One, I forgive myself for any harm I've done myself via this behavior. Two, I forgive myself for being so angry or upset or scared about this for so long. Three, I forgive myself for any harm I've done to others as a result of this behavior. Four, I give myself permission to forgive me. And then the other tool is one that we talk about all the time on this podcast, but it's the RAIN Meditation by Tara Brock. And really specifically, if you Google this phrase, the trance of unworthiness. She has these Dharma talks about the idea of the trance of unworthiness and then leads people through a RAIN meditation, which is recognize, accept, investigate, and nurture. And so it's just really confronting the fact that I have this deep judgment of myself around a certain topic, acknowledging it's there, making space for it, and nurturing it. And I I had a real resistance to the RAIN meditation for a while because I felt like it really would go against my whole goal of hating myself into being better. (laughs) And that, um, but I'm starting to see that it's not just a way where I could just get stuck in indulging myself in my own feelings or that it would be some kind of spiritual, like me doing me under the guise of a spiritual tool. But instead, it's actually like, the lubrication that I need to maybe let some of this forgive the forgiveness in. And then I'm not doing these things right now, you know, and, but can, so can I forgive that and trust myself that, that I won't, or if it's st- something that I'm still stuck doing, this forgiveness is the first key. And then the love comes of like, Oh, I am lovable. 
even though I'm human. Mm. So those are my two tools. What about you, Lindsay? Thank you so much. And I was wondering if you would be interested or open to, I was feeling really compelled that I, either I or you, of course, whoever wants to, could do the forgiveness of self meditation on Insight Timer as our first live me- interactive one well, like that and or we could also do we could do both of those and we could also have one so you would go to insight timer and under the pretty spiritual podcast you see all of our podcasts that we have but there's also a guided meditation oh, fun. where we do that self-forgiveness let's do it yeah i love that I idea it's a really good idea great okay stay tuned guys that's coming yeah definitely we're gonna start adding more meditations on insight timer and yeah. doing some lives yeah on insight timer one of the greatest apps of the whole entire world Go check <laughs> yeah. it out we love it oh my gosh it has saved me i use it all the time uh every day one of the ways that i help myself um is by asking is is what I am doing usually, is it acceptable? Because I have these expectations, as I've learned about myself, I it's not good enough. What I'm doing isn't good enough. It's not right. Like that's, that's the set point. And I've come to realize that. So I will find myself, my body tight, clenched up, and I, it will give me kind of the body cue that, oh, something's going on here. And I can do my shorthand of like, okay, so there's probably critical criticism happening here of self and self-hatred. Is what I am doing, is it acceptable? So in my job, the job that I'm doing, is it acceptable? Okay, so I, I'm not perfect. I'm like, I didn't do it perfectly. What are my expectations in this situation? Have I done, is it? honestly enough, you know, because like once I see what my expectations are, well, like I've got to fix and solve this whole entire thing for this whole entire company right now is my mentality. I have to make sure that these children are so well taken care of that there's never any pain in their life. (laughs) That is how I am approaching my life. Very relaxing. (laughs) So the simple phrasing of like, looking at what I have done and is it is it acceptable? Can I find myself and this moment acceptable exactly the way that they are in every way? And that will help me kind of ratchet it down a little bit and give me a little bit of perspective. So that's real time in the moment application of forgiveness of self. Tara Brock, who we love so much, of course, when something like that is going on, she just puts her hand on her heart and she says, forgiven, forgiven. Mm. And I love, I just love having that moment of like, oh, okay, I see that you really want to be so perfect and do everything so right because maybe in some way you believe that this will make you lovable and worthy in this life. Forgiven, forgiven. You know, I've really started talking to myself in this really heartfelt way to kind of bring more of a integrated relationship of all of the parts of me that are kind of swirling around. And then for the next tool is listening. So really listening to myself, listening to the way I talk to myself about myself. And the best time to practice this is when meditating. So hear me out. (laughs) You know, so you're meditating, you're doing a simple breath meditation and all you are to do is just focus and breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out. And you've taken one breath in and you've gone somewhere else. And then I go, oh my God, how are you not (laughs) just breathing in and breathing? Oh, right. Oh, so that's how. Okay, can I come back to my breath, breathing in? So these little moments in meditation, um, really getting to listen to ourselves and how we talk to ourselves about ourselves are really rich moments to see perhaps what is going on all throughout the day 
and to maybe find ways of just softening and maybe being a little bit more gentle or just honestly for the first five, eight, ten years in my life, (laughs) just it's taken me this long to see how what the type of reaction I have to myself and how to bring in a pause to be able to be more gentle with self. And that's the pathway that I need for me. So again, it'll be very personal. It's a very personal journey for you to go on and check in with and ask yourself, where where does my heart, where does it need some tender, loving forgiveness? Where are the ways that I'm holding back love and acceptance of myself? So where are they? Let us know. We would really love to hear from you. Where are some areas that you would like to practice self-forgiveness? You can find us on Instagram Mm -hmm. and Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can also find us on Patreon Mm -hmm. where we do extra content. If you feel so inspired to check that out. Mm -hmm. I have a last thought and it's At the core, all of this effort, I believe, and energy of moving through self-forgiveness to foster self-love is my spiritual guide in the area of self-love says, Annie, you are a unique and precious creation. And when you love yourself, you are open to guidance and clarity about the divine direction of your life. And that you can give your gifts freely to the world. But when I'm so embattled with myself, I'm actually not being of service mm-hmm. to the world and the people around me. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I can't, I am, you know, but it's, I'm, I'm closing off that divine direction. So actually the thing that I think is selfish, right, this tending to myself, healing myself, forgiving myself, filling myself with love is actually the greatest gift that I can give. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, and it's just nice. So we'll say this to all of you. Each and every one of you is a unique and precious creation. You truly are, and I, I hope you can let that sit on your heart today and really feel it for yourself. Thanks so much. Now love yourself. Love yourselves. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.